My name is Reggiani. I came to the Universal Church through my mother. I was 12 years old. I always used to be involved with the things of God. One time, during a youth group meeting in the old church that we had here in Brass, I felt great joy while seeking God. This made me think that I had received the Holy Spirit. From then on, I would say that I had the Holy Spirit. When I was 21 years old, I was an assistant and I got married to my husband, who was also an assistant. As the years went by, the person I really was came to light. I was rude, I was ill-mannered, especially to him, not so much with other people. I craved his attention. I would require a lot of his attention, and that was what I would always contend about. And he would always remain quiet. I would say a lot of things. I wanted him to argue with me, but he wouldn't. I spent many nights crying, craving attention, and he would end up sleeping because he had to wake up at 4 a.m. to go to work. With this, my marriage was going down the drain and I was increasingly demonstrating that I did not have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Due to my work, university and our day-to-day -day activities, I grew cold. The work of God became a burden for me. Going to an assistance meeting was a burden for me. Evangelizing was a burden. Everything was a bother for me. One day I went to the pastor and said, Pastor, I'm not well spiritually. I'm feeling weak and I want some time to seek God, to take care of myself and to seek the Holy Spirit more. I want to seek for my spiritual life. However, in reality, I didn't want more time. I wanted to stop being an assistant. When I did this, I had a feeling of freedom, you know? Gosh, I'm no longer an assistant. I can do whatever I want with my life and can go wherever I want. I don't have any responsibilities anymore. I can do whatever I want. I ended up getting a tattoo on my body saying, just live, which was what I wanted. What happened then? The problems in my marriage worsened, not because of him, but because of me. I was the problem in my marriage. My neediness increased constantly. I kept going even further away from God. I didn't leave the church completely. I started going to church once every two weeks. Two years after I had the feeling of freedom and began to do my will and desires, depression set in. I started feeling sad. It started off as a little sadness, but from there, I started to have panic attacks as well. I started suffering with things that I had never experienced before. One day, on my way to Brass, whilst on the bus, I started to panic. It felt like something bad, a tragedy, was about to happen in my life. I started to look at the closed windows and the many people around me, and I started suffocating. I wanted to get out of the bus. It felt like a movie scene. I could hear all the noise from the traffic and the people. There were a lot of people, and that made me panic. I remember reaching the traffic light close to the temple, and a voice told me, throw yourself into the traffic. Throw yourself because there is no solution for you. A former assistant had once told me, we former assistants are already condemned. There are no more chances for us. I carried that for six years. I was tortured about that. I suffered immensely. I thought that the work of God was a burden and that I was imprisoned. But my real prison was depression because I wanted to cry every day. I didn't have the desire to work anymore. Having to work and not being able to abandon my job made me suffer even more. Having to stay married. I had a son, but I didn't care. My son was not important to me anymore. I didn't even feel like showering or cleaning the house. I hated myself. I would breathe hatred. I would use an expression a lot which many people use. This sucks. That was life for me. Living was torture. I remember that when I went to church after having had that panic attack, an auxiliary pastor came to me. 
I'm even ashamed to say this, but I thought, gosh, is it this dumb-faced pastor that's going to pray for me? I had reached the point of seeing everything with evil eyes. There was a women's meeting on Saturdays. And I would always go, but I stopped going for some time. I said, I will no longer attend this meeting. The pastor's wives and Mrs. Christiani are all pompous, pretty and speak so softly. They probably have an easy life and think that I have time like they do. And I only have Saturdays to clean the house and do my things. They think that I have the time to keep going to these meetings. I won't go anymore. Despite all my mistakes, I had a desire to get rid of my depression and truly find God. I was tired of suffering. When the pastor asked to talk to me, I told him, Pastor, if the Holy Spirit does not come upon me, I am going to end my life because I can't take it anymore. It was as if I was on the edge of a cliff. I had reached my limit. I said, I've been depressed for six years. I have reached my limit. I remember that the pastor said, how awesome. Now the Holy Spirit will come because you desire him with all your heart. This is it. I would obey everything that he said. I started taking my Bible and would sit in the first or second row of chairs, right in front. It was different because I wouldn't be distracted by someone who would go to the toilet or by a crying child. I was no longer distracted. I started listening to Bishop Macedo's message every day at midday. I started reading the Bible every day. I was always going to church. Soon enough, I was praying in the early hours, which I had not been doing previously. I really enjoyed the soap operas from Record TV, and there was a soap opera which was not Bible-based, titled No Love Like This. It was useful for evangelism. I remember that that soap opera also helped me. I searched for nourishment that would strengthen me. Then the Campaign of Israel came by at the end of 2020. I thought I would do the campaign for the Holy Spirit and for my life with God, so I am going to do it right. I am going to get baptized in water. The pastor took a jar of water and we went to the car park. I wore a baptism gown and got baptized. This was in November. In January 2021, there was a women's meeting. I remember that on this day, Mrs. Christiani told us to come to the front of the altar to seek God, and I went. You know, when we seek with all our heart, so much so that I raised my arms as far as they could go. I raised them as if I was going up a ladder to reach heaven. I said, my God, I am here, but my body is exhausted. I am here, but my desire was to be at home resting. I am here with my heart open because I want to receive you. You are everything that I need. Then a wonderful thing happened. I started seeking and the Holy Spirit, God told me, I accept you. When he said, I accept you, this cleansed my soul, my life, my body, my everything. I felt an inexplicable joy. I felt an inexplicable strength. It was as if a giant had been born in me. I felt very well and had the certainty that he was with me. I had pleasure in living. I also wanted to go out telling everyone, listen, God exists. True happiness exists. I had had the contact and the experience of knowing true love. The neediness that I had of wanting my husband's attention didn't exist anymore. I have true happiness within me. I feel loved by God and set apart by him. I have love to give to others. I am still in the same job. I continue to work. My family at home is happy. They have peace and joy. Nothing is lacking for us. We are united. We are happy. 
my life is completely different and the desire that I have is that other people have the same. If I could, I would give the Holy Spirit to everyone. One day, in the past, I had heard that there was no solution for a former assistant and that we were condemned. When I received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, the first thing that came to my mind was, that was a lie. The message that I have to say to people is that they return. Don't give up on yourself. Don't give up on having an encounter with God because the Lord Jesus is returning. He is at the door. We cannot waste any time. He is everything that a person could hope for in life. If people knew the importance of the Holy Spirit, many people today would be seeking to receive him because having the Holy Spirit is glorious and wonderful.